I got a lot of my parts in for my off-grid stuff. You can look at my prior video in this series about my planning for the off-grid. And uh, basically taking advantage of the solar panels that I currently have, which I showed in the diagram as these little batteries over here. But now I want to put all the components basically in a box and tie it all together. So let me show you the different pieces and parts that I got. So just uh, <clears throat> we're going to be going over this double pull double throw switch. It's my grid tie inverters. We already know about those. There's a bus here. There's a meter. There's the uh, big charge controller. There's the trimetric. My batteries, which you've already seen, I don't have to show you. Yeah, there's a shunt. There's a couple fuse holders. And uh, <clears throat> the inverters, which I don't have to show. But I'm basically going to talk about the box, what goes in the box, what kind of wiring and so forth that are used with it. So let's go through that. So the first thing I did was I looked for a box and uh, decided to buy one of these Hoffman 8x10 boxes, which you same ones that you can get with the uh, Coleman Air, some of the Coleman Air charge controllers. It's a very popular industrial grade hinged box. <clears throat> and uh, as substantial, substantial as it is, you'd think it would be pretty expensive, but you can buy these for only $15. So that's going to be the basis for this gray box that I've been talking about. Now let's look at what I'm going to put inside here. So here's the switch that I selected. It's a double pole, double throw, 20 amp rated switch. And this will be coming, uh, taking the feed from the solar panels, which they should be under 10, amp, 10 amps per panel. So I've got quite a bit of derating on these. And I'll have one of these per, per each of the inputs. There'll be a setting. The off setting will say that the, the wiring doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. That's the middle setting. Below would be uh, fed to the batteries, and the upper would be feed the solar energy to the grid tie inverters, or maybe the opposite, we'll figure that out. So that's the switches, and these were about $2 a piece. The next is a 50 amp uh, meter with the shunt built inside. So it's a good quality um, 50 amp meter, so that'll go on the front of the box basically measuring how much of the solar current that I'm feeding in to the charge controller. That meter was about $12. Next is a uh, fuse holder. That's an all gold plated fuse holder for gold plated A&L uh, fuses. There's the 150's that I talked about. Now these, these are a little over a dollar a piece for the 150's. But this is a real nice uh, a and L fuse holder, protective cover. You feed the wire straight in there, the heavy wire that you're running, either to your charge controller or from your charge controller out to your inverters, and the, you clamp down the the wires with uh, an Allen a hold down screw, and then the fuse goes right across there. Now I actually saw this on the Coleman Air site for about $17.50. But with a little bit of looking around, I found them for $4. So you can see there's some of these online sites, whether it's on eBay or on the internet, they really charge you a lot of money for certain parts. So it's better to look around. And if you get something like this for $4, you can really uh, appreciate the markup that some of these places have. So let's move on to the next part. All right, so here's the, my trimetric that has it's shunt. Uh, it's just a faceplate piece that came with this uh, plastic box that we normally mount separately. And on my diagram, I actually had in, you know, thought I would mount it separately, but I'm now thinking I could probably put put that right on the front of the box and have that uh, shunt inside. So that leaves one less pair of wires, or set of wires, actually several sets of wires, from coming outside of the gray box. So that's the current plan on those. So let's look at some other parts. Okay, so here's some of the higher current parts that I needed to buy. 
One was a, a major positive and negative power post. We're tying together uh, a lot of the high current stuff that's uh, going around inside of the box. And uh, these were uh, about uh, twelve and a half dollars a piece. They're uh, Blue Sea System parts. They're mainly made for boats. They come with their own covers, but very substantial. It's actually more heavy duty than I expected to see. They also sell the Blue Sea sells some uh, lower current. Uh, these are uh, <coughs> power strips that have uh, uh, number ten posts and number eight screws for uh, for doing some of the lower current termination inside of the box, and then some. Uh, some terminals, lugs for the uh, for my wiring, and I bought one gauge wire for going from the batteries, doing all the high current stuff. I bought some one number one uh, welding wire. All right, <clears throat> I was planning to make my own battery cables up to go between my batteries, and what I was going to do was have uh, you know my six cell packs in series to make up 12 volts, and then those sets in parallel to make up a 12 volt pack of total of four cells so I needed four cables and I looked at the price for heavy cable termination insulation heat shrink and uh, I came up I could probably do it for about six dollars well there's a place online that I found they would make them all up with four aught cable which is the spat as you're gonna find with five sixteenths holes made exactly for my battery bank uh, terminal spacings so these are only eight bucks a piece and they literally literally were mailed the next day so they all pre-made and ready to ship out the other nice find from this company since I do me have to make some other longer cables up is just a uh, <clears throat> cable making uh, hammer thing for my terminals you can usually see these things on some of the eBay sites they're like twenty five thirty dollars this guy sold it for 12 bucks. So there, another example of where you can get some better prices if you look around and not depend on those eBay suppliers specifically. This was not an eBay purchase. And the last thing I got <coughs> was just uh, some three-quarter inch uh, ins, uh, heat shrink to make up my ends of the term ends of the. Uh, cables that I'm using from the battery bank and to the uh, inverters. Now let's look at my cable. Alright, so here's my uh, <coughs> number one average wire gauge welding wire cable. <coughs> Bought 50 feet of it. I'll be going uh, down to my battery bank and back up, which won't be too far away. And I have to then run the uh, from my charge controller uh, out to my inverters from the box and uh, and I'm probably going to be adding some more batteries later so I want to get some heavy cable so you can see here's this uh, lot of strands in this <clears throat> and that will made up really well with the uh, the number one lugs that I bought well, this wire, you know wire is pretty expensive, this heavy stuff, but I got this for $2 a, a foot delivered, so that's pretty good. It's quite, I got it priced locally, it was uh, more like $4, but I think I got all my parts, and now it's just a matter of planning it out a little bit more and uh, putting it together. Talk to you later.